Welcome readers. This week I have a new installment to the nonfiction shelf series here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. I'm your host, Tamara Ford. And if you'd like to chat with me about the book reviewed in this episode, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shelf Addiction or in the Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official. This series is where I feature one nonfiction title that I've read during the month. And if you enjoy nonfiction, then you'll want to keep informed with what I'll be discussing each month. And you can do that by subscribing to the Shelf Addiction newsletter. Before we get started, I want to share with you a way to support this podcast. If you enjoy this show and the content that I produce, please share it with someone that would enjoy it or on your favorite social media channel. Okay, let's jump in. Last month in May, I completed The Untethered Soul, The Journey Beyond Yourself, written by Michael A. Singer and narrated by Peter Burkratz. The audiobook was published December 12th, 2011 by Tander Audio. The unabridged audio length is 6 hours and 11 minutes. This audiobook was recommended to me by my sister in early 2018. And after being asked by her a few times last year and once this year, the infamous, did you read it yet? I figured I better get this book read, or in this case, listened. You know, it was recommended to me in audiobook, so I decided to pick it up in audiobook. So the cool thing about The Untethered Soul is that it's not just nonfiction. It's also kind of a self-help book and could be considered a spirituality book as well. I enjoyed this book on audio, but I also feel like this book would be a good option on paperback. And I actually plan on buying this in paperback as well to allow me to highlight and mark up or even use page flags on some of the passages that I found really helpful. So as I mentioned earlier, my sister had been um, kind of on me to read this book. And I appreciate that because I'm glad that I did read it. So midway through reading the book, I actually asked my meditation and yoga teacher if she read it. And she was like, oh, I love that book. It's so great. And for some reason, I just knew that she would have read this book after getting halfway through. And I agree with her that this is a book that you want to pick up and put down and keep going back and forth. And not because it's boring, but because you need to sit with what you listened or read. And when you're ready for more, you return to the book. And that is how I consumed it. It, Like I said, six hours is not that long. You could binge this in one sitting, both on audio or reading it as it's only 200 pages in a physical book. But there's so much information, I think you would be doing yourself a disservice by binging it. So I did not binge it. I took my time with it and I actually spent the entire month consuming this six hour audio book. And I'm glad that I decided to do it that way because I found that I could put this book into practice immediately. And I found myself sharing with others what I learned as I read along, you know, learning how the brain works, how we should utilize our own selves to gain perspective on situations in life. And As I was reading, I realized that I was sort of already practicing some of these techniques. I just didn't know how to verbalize what I was doing. And this book really helped to clarify what I was intuitively doing on my own. In 2019, I had kind of said to myself, okay, this is the year of zero (laughs) F-bombs. You know that phrase. You know, you have no time to give zero F-bombs about anything. And that is what I was doing this year. I was really trying to actively not let things bother me. And essentially, at the root of it, it's almost what Singer is saying. So what I loved best about The Untethered Soul was how clear the message was. At times I thought, this is so logical. It ties together lots of concepts that you already know from other self-help books and tools So it makes you feel like you're moving in the right direction. The way that Singer explains how the brain works, how energy flows and other things was really excellent. He does this by using regular words, you know, regular lingo that we all know. And he's able to give examples that you can comprehend easily. Singer also shares that when utilizing meditation, it becomes easier to both reach this state of clarity and maintain it. But when you really bring it down to, you know, the basics, it's really just letting things go. Kind of like the, you know, giving zero Fs, right? But not like in an attitude kind of way. 
There was one of several quotes that resonated with me in this book, and I'll just share one right now. You can only take inner freedom away from yourself or give it to yourself. Nobody else can. And I fully agree with that. And there were so many things in this book, I found myself nodding, saying exactly, right, it's so easy. Why don't I just do that? So I found myself wanting to, you know, like I mentioned put these things into practice now, immediately yesterday. So I think that this book was even good for those taking first steps into this arena. Uh, The language isn't pretentious and it's appealing to all. And by that, I mean that throughout the book, overall, the tone was pretty religion neutral. There were correlations between different religions with the same message, but not until the end did we get into themes of God and Bible verses. So the author presents this in its own chapter near the final points of the book, where, you know, you will see some Bible verses. And if the God themes and Bible verses aren't for you, you'll be okay because it's just at the end. And if you like it, then I think you will be fine with this as well, because the way that it's integrated, it's really seamless. And you can draw the lines between, you know, Christianity and some of these spiritual beliefs. But again, it's not overbearing and it doesn't take over the whole book because the the methods and the ideas are almost scientific and spiritual and a little religious. It's like it's kind of all mixed in there together. It's really hard to explain, but when you listen to it, it just all makes sense. And it's like everyone should be trying to untether their soul. That's what I think anyway. So let's talk about the narrator. Peter Burgrat had a soothing and strong voice when delivering the material. At times, I wish he was a little louder and his tempo was a little slow sometimes, but bumping that speed to 1.3 or 1.5 really helped me uh, with the speed issues. So I do recommend this on audiobook. I recommend the two book situation where you have an audiobook for easy listening and then you go back and you have a paperback where you can make notes where you can easily go back and read those notes later. With all of that said, I rated Untethered Soul 4 out of 5 bookmarks. I do recommend the book on audio. If you've listened to this title, be sure to find me on Twitter and Instagram. Let's talk about it. I'm going to end things there. And until next time, happy reading. If you enjoyed today's book chat episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcast and leave a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. Most importantly, you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy all things bookish, including author interviews. Thank you for listening, and until next time, happy reading.